Hey everyone, and welcome to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. And this is the place where you can develop your ninja skills with all of your favourite creative cloud, desktop and mobile design apps. In this movie, we're going to create an Instagram grid template in Photoshop. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to create a brand new document here. And the size generally is about 1080 square for Instagram. At least I believe that's the recommendation. So what I'm going to do here is type 1080 in the width, but I'd like this to be a four screen panorama. So I'll type times four just there like so. And as I tab through, you'll see it does that calculation for me. And then I'll put 1080 in the height like so. I tend to do mine at either 144 or 300 ppi. Just here I'm going to use RGB color, 8-bit is fine for the moment uh, here. And from my color profile, I'll just choose working RGB here, but you can use whatever matches for you and square pixels like so. So I'll do that and here's my document ready for me to split up. So I'll go to the view menu, come down to new guide layout, and you'll see here that I've already got a profile for an Instagram panel. It's really easy once you set one up, you can just save that layout from the menu just here. As you can see, save it as a preset. So this one has four columns and one row. If you were doing one of the profile grids with two rows, then of course you'd enter just two in there like so. And no gutter in those places there. That's the space between guides. And my guides are set up. I'm then going to go over to the crop tool family here in the toolbox and I'm going to pick the slice tool. Originally, of course, intended for web graphics, but still it appears sometimes useful. I'll then go into the options bar and hit slices from guides and that sets up all of my slices for me without me having to do it. My next step will be to go up to the file menu come down to export and choose the legacy save for web option here and with no slice selected what will happen is any settings I choose over on the right hand side here will apply to all slices. Now if I go to JPEG high that gives me a quality there of about 60. I'm just going to increase that to 80 into the very high region or possibly even maximum if you wanted to. Everything else there is just fine for me. So what I'm going to do is just hit done like so. That just basically bakes those settings into the file. I'll then save this out onto my desktop. So what I'm going to do here is call this Instapano like so and as a PSD. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK with that or save just there and my file is made. Now I'm going to jump out to my finder, that would be an explorer of course on a Windows machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that, okay, and choose get info on the Mac. That would be properties on a Windows machine. And I'm going to make one small amendment here to the extension. I'm just going to add a T on the end. That turns that into a Photoshop template. Now it's important that you do it in here and so you get this particular dialogue, something confirming that you want to use the PSDT extension, which might not work if you just do it manually in the finder like so. And the result is because it's a template, you don't affect the original document. So if you open it up like so, you see you get a brand new untitled document. Now what I'm going to do here is just drag something in from one of my libraries. I've got a whole bunch of lovely images here from Adobe Stock. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring in this one of some lavender fields, like so. I'm going to just put that into the center of my canvas there and then make sure that here in the options bar that the fields are linked for width and height. I'll then use what I like to call stapler accident finger to press down on my trackpad and scroll to the right to change the dimensions until they fill the canvas and then bring that down like so. 
I'll then go up to the file menu, come down to export and save for web legacy, like so. Okay, I'm just going to change my preview here to use the document profile for the colors. Don't worry, they look all muted because the slices aren't selected. I'll hit save and I'll pop this out onto my desktop here. So I'll just call it pano like so and do that. And that's it. You can see that if I go back to my finder, I've got a folder here called images and these panorama parts are ready for me to deploy out in just seconds and then I can just drag in another one if I want to or close this and I've always got my template and that's it we are done for now don't forget to subscribe to the channel reach out to me via Twitter or my Facebook page you'll see those details in just a moment please do spread the word keep on watching and until next time see ya